All right, we're back with our C12 showcases. Once again, here's a quick overview of the dice and the loadout before we do our full run showcase. So let's talk about the Walker Symbiosis dice. So in terms of how powerful it is, I would place this one smack bang in the middle of the bunch. It's nothing compared to the top dice that give you insane bonuses and stacks upon stacks of path boost, but its passive is fairly useful and it's super straightforward to get. So the Walker Symbiosis dice is a knowledge based dice that incentivizes you to apply knowledge to the field and then step on it. It's that simple. It applies knowledge to two random domains at the start of plane one and plane two, and then its passive creates a random beacon on every domain that gets knowledge if that domain type is able to house that beacon. Now, whenever you step on a domain that has knowledge, you gain one stack of path boost. So it's pretty much one of the most generic custom dice that you can play. In terms of our die loadout, we're going to get the ubiquitous die face found in almost every single loadout, general inspiration. So this is one of the best duplication faces in the game, and it's really gonna be useful for us to generate knowledge on whatever domain that we wanna be targeting. We then have general deduction, which applies knowledge to three random domains. This one is pretty obvious, and the fact that it only applies knowledge to domains that don't currently have knowledge makes it amazing for field coverage. Beacon geometry is here for us to pick up additional blessings. It gives us one blessing for every type of beacon that exists on the field up to a maximum of three. You'll find that you'll have quite a few beacons during this run since you'll be getting them on almost every knowledge tile. What I like to do during my runs is to duplicate reward domains to target three star blessings before using geometry to pick up all my two star and one star blessings. Then for our purple faces, we've got general counteract, which copies any domain into an adjacent position and then applies knowledge to it. This is just a solid all rounder and we'll be getting plenty of use out of it. Next, we have exponential explosion. This lets us apply knowledge to all domains adjacent to the domain that we move to. So this is quite good as it guarantees that we step onto knowledge tiles on our next two moves. And then we have general dialectics. So this one isn't that amazing, but it is a lifesaver when you step on your last domain of a particular type on the field that you wanted to copy. This then lets us copy it to another random position, allowing you to then use inspiration on it next time. Okay, so that's it for the loadout. Let's jump on over to the full run showcase. All right, this time around, I'm hopping on to a friend's account to do a mono ice preservation run since I don't have a Japard on my account. We're gonna be doing this with a Japard and March for the shield and finishing the team off with Jing Liu and Ran Mei. But you could probably slap in anyone in the last two slots there, even maybe a Fire MC for more shields if, you're running, if you wanna run a preservation team. If you wanna have a laugh though, check out the Jing Liu's gear at the end of the video. I unfortunately didn't even bother to check out the item loadouts before I started playing since I had faith in my buddy to gear his characters properly, but how, how wrong I was. Well, I actually think that he swapped out his gear to another character or something before I started playing. So I'm doing this with a random set Jing Liu with underleveled relics. And March 7 is also rocking unleveled traces as well. You know, overall, this is actually great for us in terms of a showcase, since it just goes to show that you don't need a perfectly geared team to pull this off. And so Walker Symbiosis is a pretty mid dice as well. I think we've already covered most of the top tier dice in the game, so it's really just gonna be a bunch of terrible dice left to showcase, which I suppose are the ones that people will need help with. So, you know, hopefully you find this useful. So in terms of the overall strategy here, since we're going mono ice, I figured we'd be going for some dissociation buffs for some sweet percentage damage, alongside with the obvious quake damage that we'll be getting from running preservation. And so knowing that both of these builds play around some key three star blessings, we wanna target some reward domains as they've got the best chances for us to nab three star blessings. We're gonna want all the preservation three stars. So for quake, that's gonna be both the quake blessings that do damage when you get hit and the one that gives you bonus damage when you perform attacks based off of your total shield value. And of course we want macro segregation, which essentially just doubles the amount of shields that we gain. And then for dissociation, we want the one that freezes after six hits and dissociation application when hitting frozen enemies. And since we're running mono ice, the one that gives dissociation on break isn't too bad either, but that does depend on whether or not we get ice weak bosses. Outside of this, we want to ramp up our shield gain as much as possible through preservation blessings, and we also want to snipe Melancholia for more consistent dissociation damage. So the blessings for us are going to be really important this run. Okay, so let's just have a quick chat about what's happened so far in plane one. So I've actually had a terrible run here. I had two reward domains set up with beacons on them that I wanted to hit, and then I had a random domain get duplicated on top of one of them, and then a random emergency occurred and took out the other. So I'm going through plane one with zero rewards. On the bright side, we did get one cheat at the start and we're going to go through two intracognition domains. So at least we're gonna have a few cheats and a bunch of rerolls for plane two to make up for it. I honestly find that Japard preservation is such a strong comp and while the damage isn't anything to write home about, it's just such a safe playstyle that I pretty much just auto through every single boss as you see shortly. 
there's almost no risk of dying when playing this comp. Like, this might be a controversial take to some, but I think Japard is actually on par with Fushuan in terms of how valuable he is as a defensive character in Golden Gears. I honestly would take him over a Huafa or a Locha any day of the week. And the reason for this is that he, along with Fushuan, are the only sustain options in the game that provide one-shot protection in Golden Gears. It doesn't matter if your Locha can heal a million health if your Jingli was just getting popped from a single swarm AoE. I mean, I understand that it's due to the fact that we're running preservation that Japad is so strong as well. Since the thing that makes Fushuan top tier is that you can just slap her into any comp and she'll just immediately be broken. But Japad does need a few preservation blessings to get him consistent, but it's actually not that hard to find those. Okay, so I'll just skip through the plain one boss here since there really isn't too much to talk about since it's just a glorified elite. We do get our first preservation 3 star though from this boss and I was about to pick macro segregation here but then I ended up changing my mind at the last minute and I picked metastatic field instead. I felt that during that last fight there was no point in which I was ever in danger so it's better off to get more damage instead. The goal of plane 2 is for us to hit a bunch of reward domains anyway so we should have a pretty good chance of picking up all the 3 stars that we need here. So we're in plane 2 now and we've got 3 cheats and 5 rerolls from plane 1 so we're looking pretty good. I figured that we'll start off by plopping down some knowledge as that's going to be dictating the path that we take. I can also see that we've got one single reward domain on the field as well so it's going to be crucial for us to start duplicating this before anything happens to it. Although it is also kind of risky duplicating this early on since there's a high risk that you have it duplicated onto a bad spot that you can't end up reaching. So looking at the map here I decided to risk it anyway since there's really only a single tile here that I can't reach right now so I pop the cheat and I roll the inspiration and it didn't actually do too badly. We got two reward domains and it's sitting in like a line of knowledge so we can easily make our way there and pick it all up as we head to the boss. And here we get a cosmic crescendo. I've always got a thing for this event even though most of the time it screws me over. It is nice when you get 10 good events in a row though. This time however I didn't get lucky. I got a free blessing upgrade and two blessings but then I also got three bad curios and also lost the curio. I do usually hate getting that self-duplicating courier that makes you lose 5% attack, but thankfully I'm not really depending on my Jing Liu too much this run, so I can live with it. And so here I pop another cheat and I pick Inspiration once again. At this point, anything that appears in the lower section is pretty much a wasted domain for me, since I already know that I need to be pathing up north before going down diagonally to hit those rewards. So I'm really hoping for more rewards appearing up in the top section instead, but we did however get one reward duplicated into the lower half here unfortunately. Luckily the other one spawned near us so it is claimable for us. And here we go, our first reward of the run. We got a Mirror of Transcendence which is pretty average and then we also got the Cosmic Altruist which is a guaranteed 3 star. The Altruist event is pretty good, it gives you two options. If you pick the first option you get two blessings upgraded at random and the second option will always give you a 3 star blessing. And so with that we pick up Macro Segregation which just doubles our shields and Quake damage along with it. So once again we're going to continue duplicating our reward domains. The goal here is just to duplicate them all the way into the boss in order to pick up our last preservation 3 star along with the two remembrance ones that we need. I wasn't really sure how I planned on getting melancholia since there's really no way to guarantee it. I was just hoping for some kind of miracle to occur here. So our pathing here is looking pretty good. We've got four double reward domains and an intracognition on this path now. So that's eight chances for rewards along with five stacks of path boost. The downside here is that the rewards very rarely ever give out 2 star blessings so there's going to be a few high value blue blessings that we're going to be missing. So I do try to make a mental note here that we will be targeting those as best we can in plane 3. And so this is the other really good reward event and it's called the Insight from the Universal Dancer. The only caveat here is that you will need at least 50 fragments in order to use this one but it's always going to give you a 3 star blessing. When you trigger this event, you get a chance to pay 50 fragments and have it doubled and this can occur up to 3 times and when it does fail it then gives you a 3 star. So with this one here I get the option to pick between reticence and innocence. In most cases I would prefer reticence but since I've got no dissociation application at this point I figured I would get innocence for now. Ultimately it doesn't really matter since I've got a few double rewards left on the field so I'm bound to get what I need from them eventually. So with this reward domain here we get two really good events. We've got the beauty bugs which lets us pick between three curios or a three star blessing. I typically go with the blessings unless there's nothing I need. And then the knight of beauty is a bit of a wild card. There's so many things that it provides and you get a choice of three but whatever it is the choices are generally pretty useful. This time around I decided to go with some random two or three star blessings so that I can get more resonances. 
We haven't had too many opportunities during the run to pick up any two star blessings, so everything here is pretty good. The attack increases are kind of useless for us since we're not really depending on our attack damage, so the clear choice here was she structure and solid solution for more quake AoE damage. And so with this next reward we get another beauty bug along with a triple trotter. We managed to pick up our full eye blessing here for our disassociation application when attacking frozen enemies, so that's great. We're pretty much done with three stars now, but unfortunately our second event was trotters, which is pretty much the worst thing that you can get for C12 runs. <laughs> These things are so tanky here that I call it a win if I can even get a single kill. Okay, so now onto our final reward domain. We did pretty well in plane two. I did make it my goal to get all six of the three stars that I wanted during this plane, and we ended up pulling that off. I pick up my last remembrance blessing here from this domain, along with a two star preservation blessing from the mirror occurrence. I still don't have melancholia, unfortunately. Having that would have closed things off nicely, but we should be okay without it. Okay, so now onto the plane two boss. So this is usually the first big war for most runs. We've got the option between the D and Japard, so obviously we're going to go with the Ebon D due to the ice weakness. So with this fight, I wanted to prove a point here that Japard is just insanely powerful. So I flicked the fight over to order and I just went to get a snack. The AI in Jing Liu sucks here as you can see, but it doesn't even matter since we're just using her to apply freeze and dissociation. I probably should have just swapped her over to Pella here since she would have done a better job at that to be honest. Japard's shields in this fight is just insane. Our entire team is pretty much invincible and we even tank multiple double seed nukes without even flinching. I honestly didn't even watch the fight yet since I just played on auto for the entire fight, so this is actually going to be the first time I'm watching this as I edit the video. So let's just see how OP Japard is. Existence is unity. A will forged in ice never falters. Will be swept away by the wind. Huh. Blade of moonlight. In the lunar flame.
will forged in ice never falters. <laughs> be swept away by the wind. You can't run! A will forged in ice never falters! in ice never falters all will be swept away by the wind All right, so well, that was a plane two boss. Well, how crazy was that? I think I watched that entire fight there and I honestly just took damage once throughout the entire fight. People are really sleeping on Japard. He's insanely powerful. Okay, so now that we're in plane three, we've got 144 bonus shield damage. So that's about 12 stacks and we should be able to get another five stacks or so here in plane three. Now, remember how I said previously that I was making a mental note to get more two star blessings in plane three? Well. I monkey brained it and I totally forgot about that. I ended up using my inspiration dice on reward domains instead. So now we've got two double reward domains on the field instead. The plan should have been to duplicate the intracognition domains instead since they give one blessing, one courier and 50 fragments. So you get a better chance of getting two star blessings from them. I'll skip over the rest of the domains here since we really didn't get anything of value that really added too much to our run. We didn't get Melancholia unfortunately, so we're going to have to be doing the plane 3 boss without it. If you wanted an optimal run, then you should definitely be aiming to get it since it does significantly increase the damage output of the team. So here's the plane 3 boss. I went with the Grizzly since it does have ice weakness and also far less freeze resistance than compared to the Swarm. I once again chose to simply auto battle this fight since I knew there was really no way that I would die against this since Japard's shields are just insane. It's a pretty long fight, almost 10 minutes long from what I can see. I just flicked it to auto battle and then I went to get some lunch while it did its thing. So in terms of optimizing the run a little bit more, I would have definitely put actual relics on Jing Liu so that she could deal damage. Otherwise I would have also just swapped her out for Pella. And then getting Melancholia would have also been a huge one. That would have given me so many more dissociation nukes than what I was getting here. And then also just running a better die loadout would have improved this run much more, it's netting me way more blessings. The loadout that I actually used here is not the one that I showcased at the start of the video. I actually updated the loadout that I showed you guys after doing this run since I found more points of improvement over what I ran here. 
But overall, even with all that, we had zero issues with this run. Keep in mind that this is also using a pretty average custom die. If you use this very same team with a better custom dice, it's just gonna slap. Anyway, I'll let the fight play out now. It's a pretty long one, but it does show how invincible this team is. Once again, I don't think I even took damage this fight. We didn't even have a single close call. Now, if only I could get Japan on my own account. Oh well, there's always adventure in coming up. be swept away by the wind. will be swept away by the wind.
existence is unity. Try that again. A will forged in ice never falters. In lunar flame. Blade of moonlight. Away by the wind. You're Watch this awesome move. Is that all? You can't run. Be swept away by the wind. In lunar flame. In lunar flame. in ice never falters <laughs> existence is unity in ice never falters watch this awesome move <laughs> you can't run every petal and all will be swept away by the wind Blade fodder. 
This ends here. Enjoying yourself? Every petal, all will be swept away by the wind. Try harder. Some of It'll Go heal. Away. Ready for dinner. Time. 